the Minneapolis City Council failed to override the mayor's veto of a progressive rideshare bill. So what's next? So a quick overview, legislatures here in Minnesota have been trying to get higher pay and better protections for rideshare drivers. A few months ago, the state legislature passed a progressive rideshare bill only to have it vetoed by Governor Waltz, his first veto in his four years as governor of the state. And the main reason for his veto had to be the threats from Uber and Lyft threatening to leave the state if the bill was signed into law. Then recently, the city of Minneapolis took up the fight and passed a progressive rideshare bill only for that bill to be vetoed by the mayor of Minneapolis. And for that bill as well, both Uber and Lyft said they would leave the city if that bill was signed. There was one final chance for the veto to be overridden if nine of the 13 council members voted yay on the bill. The bill initially passed with seven yay votes and five nay votes with one member absent and the override failed with only five yay votes four members voted to override five voted against override three members were absent for the vote and one of the absent members during the vote voted to override at the end of the meeting so we're back to the drawing board um, what's next both Walls and Frey have said that we needed more data and Walls's work group study on rideshare recommendations is expected to be released in January. Now what Uber and Lyft could try and do is get similar legislation to Prop 22 which was passed in California in 2020. We don't want that. Back in 2020, Lyft, Uber, DoorDash, Instacart, and Postmates contributed over $205 million into campaigns supporting Prop 22, the most expensive ballot measure in California's history. The fact that these companies wanted Prop 22 so bad tells you all you need to know about the bill. And of course, in their campaign for Prop 22, these companies did not advertise to voters that the bill would be completely consumer funded. Otherwise, there is no way in hell the bill would have passed. It hasn't affected the bottom lines of these companies at all. In fact, there has been terrible accountability with where these funds for Prop 22 have gone. In fact, back in June, our own Sergio and another driver, Pablo Gomez, helped to get millions of dollars to drivers because an inflation clause wasn't being implemented as was stated in the original bill an incredible oversight by these companies so we don't want a prop 22 clone what we do want is the washington state model which the state legislature the minnesota state legislature tried to get something similar passed and then the minneapolis city council tried to get something similar passed and the main goals of these bills are to get higher rates for drivers and also to get better driver protections these legislators alone couldn't accomplish this the way to accomplish this is with public pressure if enough drivers if enough of the public gets behind these bills then they will be voted into law like what happened in Seattle and Washington State. The upfront fare calculation for rides needs to go away. That has to stop. Drivers should be getting paid for actual time and actual distance. And this should be implemented nationwide so these upfront fares can no longer be manipulated by Uber and Lyft. Again, we need to keep this battle moving forward. Contact your legislator, contact your governor, contact your mayor. We need to keep applying public pressure. But what do all of you think? Um, I appreciate the legislators here in Minnesota trying to get something progressive passed. And it's unfortunate that at the last step, these bills aren't able to get over the finish line. Uh, thanks again for watching and drive safe. Thanks.